In that year, Merrick Alma did not start at the time when it was supposed to start. Twice the rain started and stopped suddenly. The flow of water in the river Kaveri and its tributaries was decreasing. The newly planted fields began to wither without water. It was all a cometary accident. People started talking. Along the way, Santhana Mudan and Pungazali kept listening to speeches like the country seems to be in trouble in every way, confusion in the affairs of the kingdom, there is no information about the prince, and moreover, the sky seems to be deceiving. There was no rain and it was comfortable for their journey. Since that morning, the awning has been blowing. It was unbearably sultry in the afternoon. They were sweating as they went under the cool shade of the trees at Rajapat. Doesn't it seem like fifty months? Isn't it like summer? They talked to each other. A short time after the Palyavatarayar's palace palanquin passed them a cold wind suddenly began to blow. The leaves of the roadside trees rustled and rustled in the wind. It seemed to be getting dark in the northeast. Dark clouds appeared at the bottom of the sky. Within a short time, the cloud clusters came crashing into the sky like a herd of elephants. The breeze turned into a whirlwind, small raindrops fell in the gust of wind. A light drizzle began to fall and at quarter past four it became a torrential downpour with the sound of so. You can't tell the trees on the side of the road in wind and rain. The tree branches began to break and fall dead. Then the birds that had taken refuge in them screamed and flew in all four directions. The people who were going on the road also scattered in all directions. Some ran to escape the wind and rain. Others ran for fear of being killed by tree branches falling on their heads. A few others ran away in fear after hearing a thunderous sound like the bursting of cosmic cataclysms. By the time the rain stopped, the day was gone and night was approaching. Santhana Muthan and Pungazali abandoned the idea of entering Tanjavur Fort that night. They decided that it would be enough if Sendan went to Amuthan's Nandavan hut that night. They braved each other and walked cautiously in the rainy darkness. Punguzali. You who have seen so many storms and heavy rains in the middle of the sea. You are the one who leaves the boat in the midst of waves like a mountain. Are you so afraid of this rain? Sentin Amuthan said. No matter how much the storm blows and the rain falls in the Mediterranean, doesn't the tree break on your head? If it falls, the thunder falls. Said Punghuali. Before they closed their mouths after saying this, they heard the sound of a tree breaking and falling dead in front of them. Sendan Amuthan held Pungazali's hand tightly and stopped him from going up. There's no use hurrying on. There are some mandapams here by the side of the road, we can stay in one of them for a while and go up after the rain has subsided. Sentin Amuthan said. Sure, but how can we find the hall in this darkness? Said Punghuali. You'll know when the lightning flashes. Look carefully both ways. Sentin Amuthan said. A flash of lightning flashed, turning the sky and earth golden and dazzling. There's a hall. Sentin Amuthan said. Pungazali also saw that hall. In the same flash of light she also saw a big tree falling a little way ahead of them. Some people seemed to be trapped under the fallen tree. Amuda. Did you see the fallen tree? Under it. She said. Yes, I see, that fate will befall us too. Let's hurry to the hall. After saying that, Amuthan grabbed Pungazali's hand and hurried towards the direction of the hall. Both reached the hall. They squeezed the water from the dripping wet clothes. After squeezing the cloth Punghuali also squeezed her long hair. The squeezed water fell on the floor of the hall and ran into small channels. Damn! Did we wet the hall? Said Punghuali. There's no harm in the hall. Colds and fevers don't come. Are you drenched like this? Sentin Amuthan said. I was born and brought up in the sea. Another name for me is Samadra Kumari. Rainwater will not harm me, said Pungazali. Her spirit then flowed from a roadside hall near the Tanjavur fort to the Sudamani Viharam in Nagaipadinam. Wasn't the person who first called her Samuthira Kumari in that Sudamani Viharam? Pungazali Minandavan and Cottage are just a short distance away. 
You can go there after the rains. My mother will take good care of you. Amuthan's words fell half-heartedly on Pungazali's ears. It flashed again and caught the eye. A flash of lightning made clear in its light the scene they had half seen before. Both were startled. A big banyan tree was uprooted and fell on the road almost opposite the hall. Its sprawling branches and tentacles were broken and disintegrating. Two horses and five or six men were trapped under them. It was known that some others were trying to free and save those who were trapped like that. Hastily they were disposing of the broken branches. Oh! Father! Here! They're quick! Voices like that were faintly heard amidst the sound of rain. More than all these, something else caught the attention of Chindan Amuthan, Pungazali. A palanquin was placed on the ground not far from the fallen tree. Only two men stood near it. Others seemed to be bent on rescuing those trapped under the fallen tree. Amuda! Have you seen the palanquin? Punghuali asked. I saw, Palvura looked like Ilayarianese teeth. Shouldn't the fallen tree have landed on top of that palanquin? My god! Why do you say that? You saw the queen of Palvur and said that you were going to accomplish something through her. Yes, though, I don't like that Pava or Ila Irani all that much. If you don't like it, you want the tree to fall on her, what? Should the tree fall on the heads of common people? Shouldn't it fall on the heads of queens? If it goes, let it go, now shall we go to Paul Aiken and speak to the Queen of Palvur? Shall we ask her help to enter the fort? Beautiful! A good time to interview the Queen! A good place! If we go to Palax, they will beat us for stealing in the dark of the rainy season. If I see the Queen then things will be easier. How is that? I'll tell you my sister-in-law's name or I'll say the wizard Ravi Dasan sent me. Good idea. But if we can get closer to the queen, can't we? See, Pungujali. Again a flash of lightning, in its light, two people were seen lifting the palanquin. Aha! Have you left? No, no. Does it look like it's coming towards the hall? Yes, in no time the palanquin reached the front of the hall. The palanquin bearers lowered it. Isn't the princess of Bavur coming looking for us? said Punghuali. Amuthan grasped her arm and tried to move towards the interior of the hall, but Punghuali refused to move like that. By this who's there? A shrill voice asked. Recognizing it as the voice of one of the palanquin bearers, he said, Fear not, brother. We are passers-by like you. We have come and sheltered in the hall for the rain. Punghuali said. Okay, okay. Don't come near the palak, said the same voice. Why are we going so close to the palanquin? Aren't we blessed to be on the palanquin? Said Punghuali. Synthane Muthan began, even Valovar Purumal has spoken about this. When talking about the merits of deeds done in previous births. He began. Enough, enough. Shut up and be quiet. How many of you? We are just two people, even if two hundred more people come, we can take shelter from the rain in this hall. Said Amuthan. Amuthan said what he believed to be true. Little did he know that a third man was standing inside the same hall hidden in the pillar. Samandavan said, I told you then. When the rain came, I told you to go and hide in the hall but you didn't listen. That's why this embarrassment happened. He said to his friend. Who, father, saw that it would happen like this? We thought we could get into the fort before the rain got stronger. Only this palanquin would not fall on the tree. Said his friend. At this moment another bright lightning flashed. Both Jindan Amuthan and Pungazali had their eyes and attention fixed on Palak. So in the lightning they saw a lady who had pulled back the veil of the palanquin and was staring in the direction where they stood. They also noticed that the face of the woman looking at them smiled knowing that she was happy. In another second, darkness enveloped the hall and outside. In a very soft voice Punguzali said, Amuda. Did you see? She said. Yes, I saw. 
who was in the palanquin. Pavor Ilayariani. What did you think? It was like the Queen of Parvur but a little more suspicious. No doubt, sure. What is certain? It's not the Queen of Pavur, it's my mad Aunt Rani who's in the palanquin. Ush! Don't rush. How can things get done if you don't talk in a hurry? What's the matter? That's why we came all this way. We found the aunt. Shouldn't we free her and take her? Now that's impossible, Punguzali. Let's see where the toothpick ends up. Then we can think and find a way to break free. Do you mean to leave the trunk and hold the tail? That is impossible, now the ant must be freed. If you are afraid, be quiet. Shouldn't your ant agree to be freed? She's climbing on the palanquin and going jam jam. Don't you want to know where she's going, why, and who made her come? They're going to the dungeon or what? Then what can we do? Why not? I'm the one who came out of the dungeon myself. I also have some influence in the castles. I'll free your aunt somehow. Now you be quiet. Punguzali also decided to be patient and idle at that time. Then something unexpected happened to them. Mudupalak's parting curtain seemed to be parting even better. A figure came out of it. It happened like a cat walking without any noise. The next second they were near. It was so dark that the guards standing at the steps of the hall were not visible. Even in the darkness Punghuali knew very well that the one who came out of the palanquin was the mute queen. The mute queen grabbed the two men's hands and rushed to the back of the hall. Uchimukandhu embraced Punghuali and expressed her happiness at seeing her. Later, the aunt and niece had a brief conversation in sign language. How did they talk to each other in that car? How did one come to know the concept? It is something we cannot explain. Punguzali sent to Amuthan, Do you know what auntie is saying? She is asking me to get on the palanquin. She is asking me to take her to your house. She said. What's your consent flower girl? Amuthan asked. I'm going to do as auntie says. Isn't that a good way to find out if the people who asked you to catch him are here? Think and tell. Flower pot. The trick is right. What danger there is in that? Amuda. Don't you worry. Doing as Anta tells me, I won't be in any danger. If that happens, I have this knife at my waist. Punghuali said. After hugging her aunt once again, Pungazali walked noiselessly like her and entered the palanquin and left the curtain behind.